us a little while to find the flow tonight, but when you find the flow, it's worth whatever you got to do to get here. When we started this four years ago, today, Easter Sunday, we had one basic premise. Lord, we're going to minister to you, and you minister to the people. That's how we started we've never deviated from that Lord we're going to put our focus on ministering to you we're going to worship you we're going to go after you we're going to be a Jesus loving people and we believe in that atmosphere you will move and you will do whatever you need to do with us (laughs) I don't think there's any other way that I'd want to do it we minister to him and he ministers to us You don't need me. You don't need a man. I mean, we all have functions. We have gifts. We have things. That's fine. But you need him. (laughs) And all we're trying to do is create a connection point between us and him. If that's all we ever do, I'll be a happy man. I'll be honest with you. Because I want people to connect to the living God. Because he can do more in your life in one second than I can do preaching you for the next 20 years. I'm just going to be honest. You need an encounter with God. And I can't make that happen. Nobody can make that happen. But we can minister to him. And we can love him and worship him and just pour out our hearts on him. And it's like that condensation that rises up. And it turns into a cloud. And what happens? Eventually that cloud gets so heavy it falls back down to the earth as rain. That's the way it works. We just keep putting it up. Putting that worship up. Putting that praise up. And before you know it, all of a sudden it's raining in here. You know what I'm talking about? And there's nothing better. When you start experiencing Him, you can't settle for man-made. Is that the truth? You can't settle for less when you've had, you've had him. You can't settle for religion, that's for sure. You just can't settle. I do want to say a couple things about Jesus tonight. You can keep playing, that's beautiful. I've been thinking about this all week, and I think about this all the time do you know the real primary reason that you're saved tonight the, the, the reason that you're even able to be in here worshiping God like you are tonight do you know the real reason if you were to boil it down to like the most basic part you're here because Jesus was obedient fully to the will of his father You and I are saved because of one reason. Jesus completed the work that was given him to do by his Father. And I know we look at the cross and I know we look at the resurrection and we look at all those things. But I'm telling you, for me personally, the defining moment of Jesus is Gethsemane. The defining moment of Jesus is when he's sweating drops of blood. He's feeling the weight of the world coming on his shoulders. He is literally in agony and he's saying, Father, can we do this another way? This is Jesus, the Son, the perfect Son, crying out, saying, Father, is there another way? He was a real person who experienced real pain. But here's the defining moment of Jesus that saved all of our souls. Father, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And if Jesus had not said that and done that, we would be lost. There would have been no resurrection. There would have been no cross if there wasn't Gethsemane and him surrendering wholeheartedly in obedience to the will of his Father. And I'm going to step out here on a limb and I'm going to go this far. Jesus didn't 
do everything so we don't have to do anything. He did it as the example of how we should then live. And I'm going to tell you how much of a Christian you are right now. And this is going to be convicting. You're as much a Christian as you are submitted to the will of your Father. Period. That is what it means to be a Christian. Father, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That is real Christianity. You bowl all the other stuff down. That is real Christianity because that is exactly, precisely how Jesus lived. And he did not surrender to the will of the Father so that we would not have to. He showed us how to do it. Amen? This is the real gospel. So I've been thinking about this all week. God, I want to be a real Christian. I don't want to just do what I want to do. I just don't want to think what I want to think. I don't want to just go where I want to go. I don't want to just do what's convenient for me. I want to know the will of the Father. And I want to be 100% about doing that and that only. Amen? I made a commitment to the Lord in February of 97. I said, God, I've been a Christian in name my whole life. I said, but for the rest of my life, I'm going to be one. I'm going to go where you tell me to go. I'm going to say what you tell me to say. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to marry who you tell me to marry. I'm going to work what job you want me to work. I'm going to live in what town you want me to live in. I gave it all away. And I knew I did. I knew I gave my life away. I had no more choices. I had no more rights. I had no more life. And I knew it at 19 years old. It was the grace of God. I don't even know how it happened. But I knew I gave my life away. And I'm telling you guys, this is Christianity. John chapter 5, Jesus said, I did not come to the earth to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And that's what we're here to do. And we need to know what that is. We need to know why we're breathing. We're not just down here to take up space and breathe oxygen. We're down here to do the will of the Father. Amen? So, Father, help us. As we're here in this intimate place with you in your presence, God, and reflecting on Jesus and and his surrender and his obedience, even unto death, he did the will of his Father. And God, I pray that tonight you would grip our hearts with that same reality, God, that you would grip us. Lord, every selfish, ambitious, self, 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 whatever in us, God, would you deal with us? Jesus, you said, if any man would come after me, the first thing is deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. God, forgive us of our rebellion. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We've all went our own way. But God, you tenderly and and wonderfully bring us back all the time, over and over again. But God, would you set us, Lord, on that path, that straight and narrow, that we're not going to the left and we're not going to the right, but that we're just walking right down that line with you in perfect, complete, total surrender. Not effort, surrender. Not willpower, surrender. Not trying really hard, surrender. Total surrender abandonment to your will Father would you grip our hearts tonight with this reality of what it means to be a follower of Jesus would you remind us tonight of Gethsemane and that defining moment of Jesus when he said not my will but Father your will be done Can we just even confess that with our own mouths tonight? Just something as simple as saying those words. It's what Jesus said. Father, not my will, but yours be done. Father, not my will, but God, your will be done. Only your will, Father. We don't want to waste our lives, God, chasing things that are not going to amount to anything, God. We want to follow you. 
and we thank you, Jesus, again that you did the will of your Father to the end. We thank you, God, that, Jesus, you finished the mission. You finished the course. You finished the work. And you purchased our souls and gave us a path back to the Father. We thank you. We thank you. We can never thank you enough. Jesus, there is none like you. Holy, perfect, pure, spotless Lamb of God who died in our place. It should have been us on that cross, not you. We were guilty, not you. We deserved punishment, not you. But Jesus, you laid it down for us. You laid down your life so that we could be forgiven. So that we could be adopted and made sons of God. And you didn't stop there. You sent your own Holy Spirit to live in us and to work out this salvation from the inside out. By the power of your might. Not by flesh or by human effort. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, that resurrection power that you placed on the inside of every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. You gave us the whole package, the total, complete package salvation. You forgive us, you heal us, you deliver us, and you fill us, God, with your very own spirit. It doesn't get any better than that. Thank you, Jesus, for such a rich and wonderful salvation let's just thank him for another moment here thank you Jesus thank you the gospel is the most glorious story that's ever been told and we are so thankful for the gospel of Jesus Christ that has saved every one of our souls thank you Jesus for your life, for your death, for your burial, for your resurrection, for your ascension, and that you are the soon coming king. You're going to come and finish what you started in fullness. And we look forward to that day. We thank you for this gospel, this glorious gospel. May we never take for granted, God, what you've done. May we ever be mindful. May we ever be reminded of the price you paid to bring us back to you, God. We love you, we love you, we love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. if by some chance there's somebody watching online tonight that you don't know this Jesus I implore you he's real we wouldn't be getting all this crazy about something fake this is real and I implore you to surrender your life to God you can't get perfect enough or something enough to come to God you come to God like you are Whatever mess you are, you just come to God. Say, God, here I am. I just need you. Help me. And he will help you. He'll save you for all eternity. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That he 
died and he rose again just like he said he would. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. It's not complicated. He loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Amen. What a glorious gospel. What a glorious hope. Let's stay focused on the right stuff. Amen. Let's stay focused on Jesus. I surrender all. Sure. You want to sing it? I surrender all. That's a perfect way to end Resurrection Sunday. We surrender all. And in that surrender, we're going to go live in resurrection power. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him one more just something. Come on.